Hi, Sarah here from smallbusinesssarah.com and today we're going to go over how I do bookkeeping for Stripe. Now I do the Stripe bookkeeping in the same way that I do a lot of different platforms and that's with a holding method. So basically what we're going to do is categorize all of our deposits from Stripe to an account we're calling Stripe Holding and that is a bank account type. And um, actually you can get a CSV file download of the chart of accounts that I use for Stripe Bookkeeping in the description below. So then you can just go to your chart of accounts, upload your Stripe CSV file of accounts, and then you'll have everything there that you need that as I'm talking about it. So basically we're going to categorize all of our Stripe deposits to Stripe holding and then we use a journal entry to parse out the revenue, refunds, and fees. The reason why we don't just record the deposits directly to a Stripe sales account is because if we did that we're just recording our net deposits and we want to record our gross deposits less our fees. First of all, it's just better information, but second of all, we want to be able to tie out to our 1099 at year end, and the 1099 is going to show gross sales, not net, so we might as well just parse things out now and get a clearer picture of our business finances. So here we are in the checking account, and we have a Stripe deposit. Although QuickBooks is suggesting some wild things up there, we are going to ignore QuickBooks because down here you can see this is a Stripe transfer. So we are going to select our Stripe holding account. And it is exactly what the name implies. It holds the money until we parse it out where it goes on the P&L. But that doesn't mean that the money hasn't hit your bank account. That's a question I get a lot of the time. Just because we're categorizing this money to a holding account doesn't mean there's some transfer we need to do to get it back in the checking account. There's two sides to every transaction. The money is in the bank account. Now we're basically telling the revenue side where to go, except we're not putting it to a revenue account quite yet. I've done that for all the deposits for the month, and now let's take a look at our report from Stripe. If you're in your Stripe account and going to reports, I like to use this balance summary report. Set the dates to, and I do this on a monthly basis. So I each month gets its own journal entry. And this example month we're using September. So this summary report is going to tell us our gross revenue. So that's the 478 less the fees. It's going to tell you how much Stripe paid out, and if there's an ending balance, that'll be there. Sometimes there's a delay or Stripe holds the money for a certain amount of time. So in this case, we're going to balance to zero at the end of the month, but you very likely will have a balance there, and you can balance to that amount, and that is just fine as well. The only thing I, I really wish Stripe would change this, the refunds amount is down here. If they would just put the refunds up here, everything would be much better, but they don't. They put the refunds down here. So if you have refunds, you're going to have to adjust for them in order to balance at the end of the month. So just pay attention to that. Okay, let's take a look at our journal entry. To get to the bank register on the banking tab, click go to bank register. I'm going to go ahead and close Write Tool for now, but that is a tool that I like to use with my bookkeeping. And then I'm going to find Stripe Holding and go to that register. And we are working on the month of September. So you can see there is the Stripe deposit that we recorded to this holding account. Um, it doesn't have the R because in order to show this video, I uncategorized it and now I have recategorized it. So that's why it's looking a little goofy. But you can see the journal entry here. If I was doing a journal entry from scratch, I'd do plus new journal entry. But I'm going to show you the journal entry we have already done because it's already done. We set the journal entry date to the end of the month, 930 
and then we record the stripe sales, the gross stripe sales amount, which you can see we gathered from right there. Next, we record the fees to uh, expense account, and then the difference between these two amounts goes to Stripe Holding. If you had refunds, it would be in the debit column. Same thing, the balance of the two columns goes to Stripe Holding. In accounting, you your journal entries, your debits and your credits have got to balance. So down here we've got our debits and our credits and they equal. So basically after you record this amount and any debit amounts, the amount that you put here is whatever you need to make these two sides equal. And QuickBooks is gonna help you with that. They're gonna make a suggestion, but that's what we're doing. That's the goal. Debits and credits have to equal. And that's how we finish our accounting journal entry. So after we've posted that journal entry, you can see our balance. So this represents uh, after we've posted our 930 entry, this amount represents the balance left at Stripe to be deposited to us. And that is zero, just like that report in Stripe said. This particular client, every month they go to zero, but please keep in mind it is not unusual to have a positive amount there because Stripe has collected money they haven't yet given you, and that's what that represents. So basically what's happening here it's hard for people to grasp what's going on. This is our beginning balance, the ending balance at 831. This is our ending balance, 930. Our journal entry represents the amount of money, the amount of sales we made, less fees during the month. That's what we've recorded as a journal entry. And then these are the deposits that happened, that occurred out of those sales. And so by using this holding account, we're basically just placing these deposits here. The other alternative would be to record them directly to income. But if we did that, we would be missing the fee breakout, the refund breakout, if we recorded those deposits directly to income. By recording the gross income, you'll remember that's not the gross income figure. We recorded the gross income less the fees, so the 458 represents the amount available to be deposited to us for the month, and then these were the actual deposits for the month. And we do tie out to zero at the end of the month. Let me show you how this looks in the reports. Okay, so I ran the balance sheet as of 930 of 24, and you can see Stripe holding shows zero. If Stripe still had an amount they needed to give us, that would be that number right there. Now let's look at the profit and loss. Okay, so I ran the profit and lo loss report for the month of September, and here you can see that is our gross Stripe sales that we recorded. And then down below, when we get to the Stripe fees, in the merchant fees section, we've got our Stripe fees that we recorded right there. So everything is in its proper place. We have our gross sales, we have our fees recorded in our P&L. The money did hit our bank account, so there's no extra transfer we need to do, even though we categorize that deposit to Stripe Holding. Everything is as it should be. In the quick and easy method, we're gonna be able to tie to our 1099 at year end, and we're accurately reflecting how we should be showing our sales and fees in our bookkeeping records. If you have found this video helpful, I would so appreciate your like and your subscribe. And best of luck as you continue to grow your online business. See you later.